you can see how the proportions are quite different and the detail is quite different. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and I've got an open boxing today of these Tamir figurines. Now Tamir have been, uh, well they're famous for their figurines from a long time ago. So 135th scale and if you didn't know Tamir actually created 135th scale um, from the very beginning. In the early days it used to be an imperial type uh, scale and it would have been more common in 1 to 32 scale. But I think, not too sure what the story was, but I think uh, a uh, particular tank, one of their earlier kits, wasn't quite right. It actually worked out to 135th and somehow 135th has stuck. So pretty much every military type model these days um, is 35th scale. And this is their latest uh, release for figurines. Now what they've done is with this modern type of figurine, they've used a lot of uh, CAD design and actual 3D scanning. And with that, they've been able to achieve some really natural poses and flow of the fabric. This isn't the first kit that they've done like this. There have been earlier, there's been American uh, tank mechanics and also some German figures. But this is the latest release, so let's have a closer look at it. All right, so from the top, you see the box art. They're very natural poses. I mean, there, there has been some criticism that of the latest um, Tamiya kits, uh, people think that they're a little bit uh, static in a way. I mean, it is a static model, but they're looking for more, I guess, action or a more dynamic pose. I actually don't mind these because these sort of, uh, I guess, more natural prone poses, a lot easier to incorporate into a diorama. If you're into uh, action, it's very hard to make a convincing action type uh, diorama. Uh, so I think these are great. For most people adding figures um, for the first time, I mean, you have to remember that these are plastic molded figures. So at a price point where it's quite affordable and you can have a lot of figures on a layout. And I think this particular sort of pose, very relaxed pose, uh, like I said earlier, is much easier to incorporate. Okay, so on the sides, you've got a little bit of uh, uh, reference material. You've got the colors and such for the weaponry. It's always handy if you just want to work off the reference supplied and then you have some markings here for uh, actual ranks, which is like so. And then there's some more equipment here. So helmets with the camouflage mesh and without, and then entrenching tools and such. Now I thought what I'll do, oh, let's spin around this way, is we'll compare the quality of the modern 2022 figures with an early set here. Okay, so mili military miniatures. This is one of the early sets. This particular number is, what was it, 35053. So this is a, the 53rd out of all the series that they released. And this particular one is up to 379. So this is like 1975. And you're talking, what's that? That's basically almost 50 years difference between the releases of these two. And you'll see how they progressed. And at the time when these were released, these were cutting edge, okay? And I mean, they're still good. They're, they're very affordable now. I mean, even the very early kits, you'll notice that some brands have been pushing up the prices, pushing up the prices, but these are actually very, very affordable. It's interesting, you'll see the barcode that's on the front. You have to remember that back when these were released, they didn't have any barcodes at all. So that's been added there for assistance of our modern trading system. Okay, let's crack into this new set and we'll have a close look at everything. All right, so you get five figures, two kneeling and a three standing. And you've got them in this gray plastic. Actually, I don't think the blue works very well here. I'll keep the blue a bit later because the earlier ones are in a different color plastic. Let's go with the white background. Okay, because these are all molded in gray. You can see we've got three sprues. So you got accessories on this one, which is really handy. You've got all the helmets and such. This makes a lot of sense because whenever you're making a figure kit or even uh, say an armored vehicle, they can easily add this in there and you just use these around either the vehicle or because these won't change between figures, all the equipment is the same. They can make another set of figures and then just add this into it. Saves them tooling costs and also keeps the price down. Okay, so let's have a closer look. Let's have a look at the equipment first. Okay, so here we go, let's zoom in a bit. Get really up nice and close. 
Okay, so what have we got here? So they quite, they just call this a CA set. And here you've got some bayonets, rifles. You've got a Thompson submachine gun. Canteens for water, binoculars, pineapple grenades. Actually, these are great. grenades are really nice because they've got uh, all the, I guess, what do you call it? Like the segments molded in the sides. Super crisp, as you can see, there's no flashing at all. And if we can just sort of look in the side here, there's not a lot of like a uh, mold line because you've got two sides of the mold, bottom and the top. And usually you have a line around the edge, but it's, it's very, very clean. Over here, we have the helmets with the, uh, the meshing. And it's quite surprising how much detail they've gotten onto the sides because usually that area is the hardest area to add detail. But they've actually done very well all the way to the ridge here. As we go along here, we've got entrenching tools and some more bayonets. And then here, this is like an, you see here's where the gate joins. So theoretically, they could be able to cut this and use this as a separate part for other sets. So you've got some more entrenching tools. You've got the, uh, well, there's a browning over here. And the bipod extended. And back down here, you've got it stowed. So you've got options there on how you want to fit the stand onto the browning. Got some more knives there. You've got some plain helmets. Okay, so they're fully smooth. And then we go back to the entrenching tools. Okay, so that's the accessory pack of the equipment. Okay, next we'll go on to, okay, so here's a smaller sprue. You've got the two kneeling figures in this one. Let's have a close look. Okay, so this is called X sprue. Now we've got the, usually they've got the figures so that they're, so they're probably split in the center here across the sprue. So all this top section is for one figure. See the hand there, how they've used a lot of different, um, I guess, thinking about how they're, they're pulling apart the figure that aid in the assembly and the painting. So usually you'll see that the hands would be quite often, uh, they'll be cut off from the cuff. But you see that there's still some cuff attached here so they can get all the cuff detail. See around the side. And so the hand is incredibly well molded. Individual fingers. Quite often you wouldn't find any gaps in fingers. You've got the, the arm here, and then you have another arm on this side, which has got the hand attached. And that's probably for the one uh, that's supporting the, the radio. Okay, you see the torso here has been split in two. Now by splitting in two, you can actually orientate it to a point where you can get the mold to pull the most detail possible. And so here you've been able to angle the shoulders up a little bit so you can get all that shoulder detail which quite often you'd find we'll have a mold line and it'll cover, cover up all the epinets and such okay so you've got all the side detail there too and on the back you'll see how it's been hollowed out okay then you've got the legs the legs are split in half there's nothing majorly different there you can see there again how they're joined and the way they've been split, this is a, a fairly traditional, what they call multi-pose figure type set. You see the torsos would be separate. So if you ever did want to mix and match parts, you can do so. Okay, you can see how the arms are split across here, which will be the seams for the arms on the jackets. Okay, going across here, we've got some equipment here. We've got some pouches. And then you have the head right there. And the head is quite an important part because that adds a lot to the realism of the figure and then you see the radio and you see the radio compared to the size of the head I mean they were massive back in those days you have to remember that's that's 70 odd 80 years ago and then we move on to the other half and this would be the other figure so the other figure is the one that's just uh, kneeling down supporting himself with uh, the rifle head again really nicely molded and go all the way to the back here. You've got the bandoliers for um, some bandoliers for the ammo. 
right there as well. You can see how they've been scrunched up. I mean, that's in a natural hang type arrangement. And then again, we've got the, the legs in two parts and then the torso is split again. You see how crisp all that is. So one of the hardest things in injection molding is to get the undercuts in folds and such. But they've done a really good job here. And you can see just from the shadows from the light, how you've got the, the jacket here, the lapels, they've got a lot of depth to them. And there's the back there. Okay. Actually, I missed here, there's a backpack on the side as well, which is right there. Okay, so we've got that, and then we have one more sprue, which is a large one here. And this has three figures on it. So you've got one here, one here, and one here. <coughs> and also including stands as well. Just in case you want to set it up so that they're not glued into a diorama and they can be freestanding. Okay, let's have a close look at these as well. Okay, so here we've got the torso. <laughs> Excuse me, got a bit of a, a frog in the throat. Okay, so torso is split again, and you see how, how many folds there actually are. I mean, you can see from the scanning how they've been able to get that really superb okay you got the arms in two pieces and then a couple of ammo pouches then we've got the legs in two pieces so you can see on both sides even the boots very nicely detailed and then we've got the head there it's really important that all the heads look a bit different because they shouldn't look like clones of each other. And that, that's the problem that um, could happen in some of the earlier sets. Got a little patch there, a little map case. And then we move on to the figure on this side. You see how they split the, uh, the rear section here? So there are a couple of options. You can have uh, like a, uh, what is it? The raincoat hanging from the back. You can see how crisp that the front end is. You got the arms. And then the bandolier. Bandolier again in multi pieces, so it has a natural hang. And then there's the optional coat they're going to have hanging. And there's the head. Really nice. And then there's the leg. And again, you can see how it's been split, so it's multi piece. Usually you have this split across the waist but to get some extra detail they've made that a separate part and the other leg and then we're on to the last figure which is over here again front and back of the torso so a hollowed out torso got the arm you got a separate hand there there's a the head and then we get into the legs and then some more ammo packs and then you've got the, the officer's pistol there. And then you've got these very simple bases. So I mean, they didn't need to include the bases, but I mean, it keeps it all uniform looking. You know, if you like to move your figures around, because I mean, it's not hard making a basing, you just cut it out a bit of styrene, but it is nice that it's included. Okay, so that's all the plastic parts. And then we end up with some really nice decals. Okay, I'm not gonna open this because I don't want to mark the decals, but you'll be able to see through this protective, it's like a tissue paper in there. Now, if I hold it at the right angle, you'll be able to see that they actually give you all the shoulder insignia. Saves you from painting them, because I mean, most people will have great difficulty in painting these. So you've got choices there. And then there's some, um, white ones there which are probably markings for don't know what they're markings for not for the helmets we'll check the manual in a moment and we'll see but that's a really really nice touch okay so let's have a look at the manual so usually you don't get a manual with figures 
usually it's just printed on the back of the box but this is quite uh, in depth you see the options of where grenades were normally uh, placed on the uh, on the jacket and on the webbing equipment so you go through all the different figures so there's a commander and then you got your infantry so he's got the BAR he's got a carbine and uh, well he should have a um, the pistol case I'm guessing I can't see the holster there and then on this side you've got the others the final standing soldier there there's the option of the raincoat on the back and then you have the kneeling soldier here and then you have the kneeling soldier with the radio then of course he's going to need a weapon so there's a weapon and there's a map they can cut out to use and there's an, a sort of a guide on what you can do there so this guy's weapon is just pressing on top of the map and then here's the decals so there it is so the white are for the helmet so you've got the markings for captains and all the different ranks and then you have the different decals here for the shoulder pads as well okay so there you go so that's the uh kit there now what i was going to do was i was going to show you the difference between this earlier kit okay so how about i get this blue mat halfway across here because this is in white and it's going to be a bit easier to see over here okay so there it is okay so from 1975 uh, what's happened here there you go okay so it's nice it's got a little bit of really thin styrene so this is useful for making the reins so you just need to trim those off into strips we won't look at the horse we'll look at mainly the figure or the figures okay so you got those there and we'll look at these guys here and i think the biggest difference is going to be the proportions okay so you can see how these are quite stout the details are a little bit soft and we'll see that as i zoom in okay so you see that the grenades are actually already molded in and when I say stout you can see how it looks sort of short okay and then all the water bottles they look a bit out of scale they're a bit chunky got the Walther there got the helmets and what we're going to do is if you compare the torso there to this torso here okay so that's chalk and cheese very different and then if you can compare the faces oh, where are we there we go you can see how the proportions are quite different and the details quite different and when you go to weaponry let's see if we can do this let's get a rifle from here compare that to a rifle here And the grey one is the newer tooling. It's not a great difference, but I mean, there is a lot more sharp detail on this. This is a little bit softer, even though they've done very well with the, the tr trigger guard. You can see there. But there you go, basically 50 years of difference. Okay, so there you go. So that's my open box review of the new US Infantry uh, scout set so this has just been released this year and you can see how much figurines have improved over the time of that was a 50 year gap but these are spectacular so thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video please give me a like and if you'd like to see more of this please think about subscribing so thank you very much